when I was four, we moved into a very nice neighborhood. 1986. Just built. Nice schools. A few weeks after we had moved in, our neighbors moved in. I remember the moving truck being there and wondering what was going on. So I went outside to investigate. Just a bunch of adults moving furniture out of a truck. I'm not interested anymore, but I'm outside. Might as well go play with my Tonka trucks in the dirt pit out back. Then I saw a girl in the backyard. She looked at me and ran around the far side of her house. For some reason, I cannot explain to this day, I ran alongside my house to my front yard, and there she was. Upon seeing me, she ran out of view to the backyard. Again, I did the same, and this stupid shit went on a few more times before I said the four-year-old version of fuck it and just walked over. After some awkward introductions, we became friends. We were born only two days apart. Capricorn, bitches. And naturally, as we became friends, so did our parents. She was a bit tomboyish, so she ended up liking a lot of the stuff I did. I liked climbing trees, and so did she. I liked to play tonkas in the dirt pit, a 6x6 six six spot in the yard my dad had made for me, and she was really into creating channels that represented rivers and making toothpick or popsicle stick bridges in there. So, she usually ended up playing the role of foreman, and I drove the Tonkas around, digging out her rivers. Naturally, we spent more time together than we did with friends of the same sex. I clearly remembered at barbecues or just idle talk between our parents, the running gag was that we were going to marry after high school. And I think the fact that we were friends at such a young age and really enjoyed playing together eased the issue of leaving us alone together. As we got older, the leash that tied us to the house was removed. Around 9, we discovered that over the hill behind our houses existed a forest. Play in the woods was the common phrase. We would spend entire days in there. You can't do shit like that today though. And in the summer of 91, we discovered something very neat. A clearing of about 2,000 square foot with a large sycamore tree in the center. The floor was covered in ivy, not poison ivy. And over time, this became known as the place. It was also around this time, we began to notice each other as more than friends. The winter of 1995. January, it was now customary for our families to celebrate our birthdays together. Generally, on the day before hers, and the day after mine. On her birthday, I brought her to the place. I remember that day clearly. The snowfall had covered the clearing, making the area look pristine. We walked to the tree in the center, and I gave her the first gift I could afford on my own. As dumb, or as corny as it may seem, it was the first Calvin and Hobbes book. She was a huge CNH fan, and I was never good at thinking up thoughtful one-liners, so I just put happy 13th birthday, Feminon. I was given a hug as a thank you, and she sat up against the tree, and we began reading together. She was halfway through before the sun had set, and it was impossible to continue, but we didn't leave. We continued to talk for about 20 minutes before falling silent, her head on my shoulder, both of us just enjoying the moment. And then, out of the blue, Anon, do you like me? Yes. It was automatic, and I gave it no thought. I like you too. She looked up at me, and on a cold January night, under a tree in the middle of a forest, we had our first kiss. It seems that in some women, a crazy switch resides in them, and at an unknown point in their lives, that switch flips to on. Such was the case with my mother. It started with yelling and arguing, then closet alcoholism, and soon, 
Men I had never met before started coming home with her when my dad was at work. This went on until the summer of 1996, and that's when the term divorce became a regular part of my parents' vocabulary. It was very ugly, but in the end, my mother won custody of me and got the house, and pretty much everything else. We started our sophomore year together, but after a month, I was told we were moving. My mom wouldn't tell me where, or give me an address, thinking I would give this info to my father, which he would get anyway through the courts, but at 16, I didn't know how that shit worked. I wanted to give Feminon that info so we could remain in contact. Remember, it's 1996. No Facebook, and internet was still a foreign thing to us. Knowing our time together was fast approaching an end. September 21st, 1996. We move the next day. It was very early and I had to sneak out of the house, because at this point, my mom prohibited me from seeing the neighbors. She thought they were working with my dad to mine me for information. I knocked on her window, and she pointed me to the back door. Her parents greeted me there, which I thought had me busted. The past year had fucked up my understanding of them, and constantly having to avoid my mother bled into me viewing all adults as evil. She came out dressed and ready to spend our last day together, and her parents handed her a bag of food. You two spend as much time together as you need. We left and headed to the place. Most of the day was spent talking about how much bullshit it was that I was moving. It wasn't until the evening when we reached the bottom of the bag of food and found an unopened condom. Instead of trying to discover how it got there, nature took over. Once we were clothed again, the condom disposed of, Several hours passed in total silence, just holding one another. The full moon sat directly above us, illuminating the entire area. It was then I checked my watch. 2.55 a.m. The moving van would arrive in five hours. Knowing our time was up, another hour was just spent bawling. Just before we headed back home, Anon, give me your multi-tool. I handed her my Leatherman super tool my father gave me two years back. Son, if you're going to spend that much time outdoors, you need a good tool. I remember him saying this to me when I opened the gift, and to this day, I always carry a Leatherman on me. She began to carve into the tree, the classic heart with initials. I carved my initials in. Carving into a tree is much harder than a TV makes it appear. Now, we'll always be together. I spent a little over two years with my mother before she relinquished all custodial rights to my father and moved out of state. The past two years with her reduced my motivation to try and see Feminon again to zero. At this point, I had written off the whole thing and continued on with my life. Besides, I now lived 200 miles away. At 17, it was viewed as impossible. Also, the insane amount of prescription drugs she had me on for bullshit reasons helped with pushing it from my mind. I joined the Navy at 18. I spent six years there, AS, and went to school to get a BS in Network Admin, Linux, and began my career. It wasn't until I was helping my father move into another house the spring of 2008 when my past came flooding back to me. There was a box in the basement labeled, Anon's School Stuff. Eh, why not? I have a few hours to spare for nostalgia. On top was a yearbook of my fifth grade year in elementary school. I began thumbing through it, recognizing names and faces. And when I got to my class, I saw her. Over a decade's worth of memories smashed into my brain all at once. With the book in hand, I ran upstairs and told my dad sorry, but there was something I had to do, and left. He later told me he knew exactly what happened when I rushed out of the house with that yearbook in hand. I drove 200 miles back to my old stomping grounds. The neighborhood looked unchanged, save for the trees being larger. 
I got to my old house and parked in the street. She had obviously moved too, since some people I had never seen before were in the garage, wrenching on what appeared to be a 65 Shelby. I guess I'll start there. Pardon me, Anons. They came out from under the hood, and I explained myself, living next door, and asked how long they had been here. Eight years. Damn, I've been away for quite some time. I asked if I could cut through their yard to gain access to the forest. Sure. Now, maybe because I was younger and lacked any concept of distance, or maybe I just got lost, but Jesus, fuck, that place was a lot farther than I remember. When I finally reached it, I stood at the edge of the ivy. The whole area looked like a time capsule. Nothing had changed. I proceeded towards the tree, and when I found the carving, I let out an audible, no way. Someone had retouched the carving. It still looked as though it were carved within the past few months, and below it were tally marks that counted up to twelve. Twelve! That's how many years since I'd moved. After an hour of bawling, I returned to my car, thanked the homeowner, and just as I was getting to my car, Hey buddy, hold on. Not sure if this means anything to you, but... I was thinking, only two people have cut through my yard to get to that forest back there, you being one. Now, I don't know about the other one, but for the first three years I've been here, every early January, I'd find footprints in the snow, leading into and out of the woods. Thank you, sir. You've done more help than you could possibly understand. I returned early the next morning to help my father move, and began my wait. Now, I had three dates to choose from, my birthday, the day after my birthday, and her birthday. To maximize my chances of being right, I started on my birthday. Now, I couldn't go back to Shelby Rebuild's house and ask to camp outside his house waiting. Besides, what he told me meant she no longer used his yard as access to the woods, the only other point of access was a park a mile away on the opposite side. The day before my birthday, I went to the park and checked the tree, just as a dry run. Holy fuck, walking a mile through thick forest and the goddamn snow takes four fucking ever, and thank god for a GPS. There was no way I would have found it starting from the park. I was fully committed to this, to make sure I didn't miss a damn thing. I was going to stay overnight each night at the park, using its camping facilities for showering and whatnot. First three days, and nothing. I was extremely bored, and by day three, was pretty much on the verge of saying fuck this noise as my patience had run out. And then a car pulled up with a single female in it. She got out and walked into the woods. I was unable to confirm who it was though because some fat fuck was in my line of sight. All I knew was female, in a woods, and like a creepy rapist, I followed. The snowfall was heavy, and all I had to do was follow her footsteps in the snow and the breaking of sticks ahead of me. Finally, I got to the place. Her back was turned to me, and she was carving another tally mark into the tree. I stood at the edge of the clearing, which put me about 40 feet from her and waited. After some sobbing noise, she stood up and turned around. I heard a startled gasp from her and she froze in fear. I removed my hat, and her hands went up to her mouth and tears began to flow. I walked over to her and without a word, we embraced each other. After some time, we separated and began our reunion. I explained the whole deal to her, what happened after I'd moved, etc. Hours passed there, until it was dark once again. This seemed to be a thing with us. Whenever we were both at that tree, we would never leave until it's dark. She never married. She dated, but she said none of them ever felt right like we did. What I did find amusing was she went to school for and became a civil engineer. Considering the billions of toothpicks and popsicle sticks she used, making various bridges and buildings, it made sense. We spent the next few nights at her place catching up. 
I was reintroduced to her parents, who were overcome with joy to see me. Her father did ask, So, Anon, did you get any use out of it? I instantly knew what he meant. Yeah. Yeah, we did. And I must say, where other parents would be dicks about the entire thing, you two understood what had formed over those ten years and encouraged it. When she re-met my father, for the first time in my life, I saw him cry. It was rather awkward, but he was seeing the past my mother had stolen from me. A few months later, I proposed to her. Again, at the tree. Where else would be appropriate at this point? For a brief moment, we thought of having the wedding at that place, but quickly realized the logistical nightmare of moving 20 to 50 well-dressed people through a mile of thick brush. However, the marriage was consummated under that tree. The fucking tree knows more about us than it probably knows about the whole goddamn forest by now. Twelve months ago, she died to cancer. Shortly before she died, I was given a gift and given strict instruction to not open it until my birthday. Her ashes were, obviously, spread around the tree, and the wedding and engagement ring were fitted over a young branch. Over time, the branch will grow and absorb them. This year, my birthday, I sat at the kitchen table with the present in front of me, debating if I should even open it or just leave it be. After several hours of mental wrestling, I opened it. Calvin and Hobbes, the book I gave her 18 years ago. I opened it up, and inside the front cover, Happy 13th birthday, Feminon. But taped to the side of the inside cover was a folded down piece of paper. I opened it up to see the final panel of the final Calvin and Hobbes strip. She had altered the panel. You gave me what I lost, Anon, until we meet again. <laughs>